Do you really have, I, I can't believe you just said that, do you really have, at this point, with all of your extraordinary performances, you have moments on the first day where you're not confident? Second day, third day, fourth day. No, it's, of course you're not confident. It would be terrible if you were. Um, because you, you, what I, especially on the, on the stage, what I like to do um, in rehearsals as well is you don't over-prepare. So you allow the audience to uh, in to do some of the work, and you you're just you know obviously when you you're playing it, it's uh, but you still try you're still discovering it every time you're doing it, and as you discover it, the audience will go oh that's in look I can see where he's going or what he's the problem he's trying to work out you know. Okay, well, everyone just saw episode one, yes. uh, an extraordinary season. Uh, you are, uh, we were, we were all just talking right before, um, and, and one of the um, people in the audience was saying how Prince Philip is just bolder and really feels like um, he's got so much to say this season and more confident. And tell me, well, tell me about getting this role. Back in season one, were you thinking, I'm going to play Philip someday? Um, well, no, not really, except I was, uh, I was watching the, uh, you know, the age range slowly ticking away, <laughs> thinking there's, there's bound to be one part that I, for a 75-year-old, and uh, sure enough, it worked out. Um, but uh, I, I, I came to get it, uh, uh, Peter. Do, do I need this? I need the mic. No, thank you. I'm trained. Because <laughs> uh, uh, normally it would be up here, and I'd be singing into it. But it uh, anyway, uh, I met Peter Morgan, um, and... Um, God, I've got to get my head together here. And um, he told me uh, initially the way he wanted the, the character to go, and he, he told me a few things about Philip that he wanted to make public. And one of those things was the relationship with Penny Rumsey. And um, I knew nothing about it. I'd heard rumors uh, way back when I was much younger. Can I actually give you the mic? They've told me they need it for the recording. Oh, sorry. sorry. Though you okay. project beautifully. Thank you very much. Thank you. And um, where was I? Yeah. I, rumors, um, you know, they'd had affairs um, all the time, and uh, various people were named. There was a wonderful rumor that he had a, a, a long affair with the actress Anna Massey. And uh, I believed it. Everybody believed it. And um, then we discovered it was a rumor that had been put about by another actor and uh, uh, very mischievously and started it. Anyway, so um, I, I, I left the meeting with Peter Morgan thinking, did, did I want to be the, the person who was gonna upset half the nation um, by revealing this uh, relationship? And um, I, I went on holiday to France and I thought I'd just, uh, do a bit of research, and I googled uh, Prince Philip Penny Rumsey on uh, French Google, European Google. Page after page after page of this relationship that the British public knew nothing about. And um, so I, I felt very confident that I could, uh, you know, now take on this role and take on this aspect of Philip. Um, and it, it's... Uh, you know, all the conspiracy theories about uh, Diana and the press and the royal family. And it made me wonder, um, <laughs> the land of the conspiracy theory, it made me, it made me wonder, um, you know, just what it took to have that story suppressed in England and what they gave in exchange uh, in the light of Diana. I'll just lay that out there. Um, nobody in Britain is going to hear this, so I'm, all, I'm okay. <laughs> yes, 
the internet definitely only it stops at the Atlantic. It's just doesn't it doesn't go on. But well, the other thing about I mean what your original question about the I um I'd gone down this road uh, about play, playing real characters and having the confidence to do it and uh, with uh, Pope Francis. And um, oh, thank you. <clears throat> thank you. Um, and there, there'd been uh, a certain inevitability that if ever the, there were to be a film made about him that um, I would play him. I mean, the day he was... Uh, uh, created Pope, the internet was full of the images of mm -hmm. me and the Pope, or me and uh, the Pope and High Sparrow, and, <laughs> you know. And um, there seemed a certain inevitability to it. Um, and I went into that with some trepidation, but boosted uh, great confidence in the fact that Fernando Morelos was directing it. And I would have done, I'd have played, well, somebody I was more suited for, I'd have played Quasimodo or something. If uh, <laughs> if Fernando was uh, directing it, he's absolutely at the top of my list of uh, directors after City of God, which is my favorite film. Um, and uh, that proved to be, he's absolutely a wonderful human being and a great director and a great collaborator. Um, and I got a lot of confidence from uh, doing that. Uh, and also the support of, uh, I have to say it, from Netflix, who, um, you know, they, they, they get a bad press, but they, they are great producers, um, especially if it's going well. They're great producers. Um, and everything went well. We had a great company, and Tony Hopkins, wonderful. Um, and uh, so when I was approached for Philip, I had that confidence that, you know, I, did, I didn't have to, be him. I didn't have to look like him. I um, I could, you know, suggest him. And it's also the way the the series goes. There, is, the public knows there is going to be a new couple or a new family yeah. each each series, um, and you were going to present your image of uh, of the the prince or the queen. Are you some? Did you want to look back, even though you're playing, like you said, your version, and then there's the crown version of this character, um, played also by Matt Smith and Tobias Menzies. Did you go back and watch their performances to see if there was some through line that you could carry? No, no, no. I thought that would be I, obviously I'd, I'd seen them, um, so I, I I knew what they'd done. But I knew they would have uh, no uh, relevance to how I would play it. And we're complete, you know, Tobias uh, and way back Matt Smith, completely different people to me. Um, and I, you know, I've, I've done so much classical theater that uh, it's, it never worries me that, uh, oh God, who was the last one to play King Lear? I better have a look at that or, you know, um, and I and I remember when I was uh, I played Fagin in Oliver in the, at the Palladium in London, and um, of course there'd been very famous Fagins before me, uh, Ron Moody especially, and uh, but I, I never thought this was going to be my uh, thought about them. It's going to be my version of Fagin, and I was it was going quite well, and I was at the at the stage door between the shows uh, signing autographs and. Um, Everything was wonderful, and I was smiling and saying thank you, thank you. And this guy came up and said, um, "Oh, Mr. Price, and you're at <laughs> this is a terrible uh, impersonation of this poor man, but he was like this, and he did speak like this. Oh, Mr. Price, absolutely wonderful as uh, as Pagan. I so enjoyed it, absolutely marvelous. And I go, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, you were absolutely wonderful. Thanks, Junet. Oh, great, thank you, thanks. Yes, you were. And he turned to walk away, and he said, "You were just." This much behind Ron Moody. <laughs> so so uh, I'm waiting for somebody to say, you were just this much behind Tobias Menzies. This much behind Matt Smith. Anyway. One of the things that, that I loved about... Um, your performance and I th and and the Queen jokes about it in the series that like we're we're not we don't show emotion and whatever. Prince Philip has this like um, a lot of rage and a lot and of and strong convictions 
and passions, which are often not characteristics, not often attributed to the royal family. To yeah, that, well, that, we don't see it. I mean, I grew up with the, uh, obviously with the, the royal family. Um, but for the large part of my life, uh, before the internet and before everything um, that went wrong with the world. Um, <laughs> all we knew about the royal family were newspapers. And so it, you had to go and seek that information. You had to read it. Or you see, when I was really young, you'd see them on newsreels in the cinema, uh, visiting the colonies and waving a lot and smiling a lot. But you knew nothing about their personal lives and why, why should you um, so it was uh, well it was really Peter Morgan it, the research he did o over the years and uh, wanting to explore the, the, the more humane side the humanity uh, of these characters brings you to discover that uh, Prince Philip wasn't the, um, the figure you saw all your life he wasn't he was at times, but he wasn't always the grumpy, irascible person who put his you know, foot in the mouth uh, saying the wrong thing all the time. Um, and I, I, I personally found a, 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 quite a lot about him from uh, when I went to learn uh, how to uh, do fake carriage driving. Um, I'd love I was to wondering if you had done some carriage well, driving. Oh, I did. I, I did. The, I wasn't allowed. Uh, <laughs> I wasn't, they didn't allow me near the horses. I wasn't um, allowed for insurance purposes, that's what they said anyway, uh, <laughs> to be with the actual horses. But I trained with actual horses, uh, not four of them. I trained with two. I did train with four, yeah, um, in a field with... Um, uh, a man who ran a, runs a company in uh, Britain called uh, the Devil's Horsemen, and they do uh, they're the go-to people for all stunt work with horses and carriages. And I've worked with them on various other films, uh, but I hadn't met the top man, and he he was teaching me, and he he worked with uh, Prince Philip uh, when Prince Philip got into carriage driving. That uh, this guy worked with him and he was part of the entourage and he he told me just what a um a great guy he was and a great man to be with very funny very um uh, generous spirit and then you start looking back and you look at newsreels and you look at films and um he's generally smiling a lot you know and uh it, it was it was vindicated in a way when um after he died, and they had endless documentaries about him on television, and tributes to him from members of his family, especially his grandchildren, who described this uh, really nice man. Yeah, he's good. Yeah, there, there's a moment um, somewhere in the middle of, of the series where the queen says to Philip, um, you, you know, or she asks him, like, don't you want to sit still? Or, or, and he says that he's at his happiest when he's not sitting still, when he's mo in movement. Yeah. And there was something um, for someone who who is was put in that position to be very still and just kind of in the background. There was, you got to know so much more about that character, even through that one scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but the, even though he was, he talks, and it's quite, you know, to someone who's same age as him, it's quite inspirational to, uh, to realize that he's at that age, you can always be looking forward, always thinking about the future and not, um, yeah, not giving up, not stopping. Um, but there's also, a, the, the, there's a side of him that uh, you, you describe someone who's always moving and, uh, but there's, he also seems to inhabit a world with great economy, mm -hmm. economy of movement. Um, and, uh, that's the the public side of it, I suppose. That uh, you know, they they they're not over elaborate in their gestures, and uh, um, and it was it was fun for Imelda and I, uh, who've been friends for over thirty years. We worked together thirty years ago on um, Uncle Vanya with uh, with Michael Gambon, and um, it was Michael Gambon who started the Animasi rumor, by the way. Um, <laughs> 
Um, and it was it was starting that rumor. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of rumors I could start. Now. Um, uh, what was fun for us was, was acknowledging that economy, and uh, our first um, uh, dinner scene we had together, or lunch scene, and we, um, given our humble backgrounds, when the servants put the food down in front of us, we said thank you, and the the advisor from the royal household came and said, oh, no, 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 you don't do that. Don't do what? You you don't say thank you, really. Ever. Oh, well, that's nice. Oh, good. I can, I, so you can enjoy those moments. There was a, a lineup of people. Uh, it wasn't a formal lineup. And I, when we were arriving in Balmoral, and uh, the advisor, I asked them about what th it was the staff that was lined up. Mm. And he said, uh, it wouldn't happen at all. Uh, it's very downton yes. for that, this to be. So it was, it was there for visual purposes. And I said, well, what should I do with them? He said, ignore them. <laughs> what? I don't, wouldn't I shake hands? No, no, no. This is staff. You, um, you don't acknowledge them. Um, so that's actually quite, you know, that directness and that economy, it's quite fun to play. How you know? was it, you mentioned that you've, no, you've known um, Imelda for so many years. How is it working with when you have that familiarity and you have done projects with someone and you have a relationship, but you're inhabiting these two other characters? Do you prefer that to start working opposite an actor you've never worked with? Well, it it depends on the role. Um, uh, it uh, it was absolutely wonderful and helpful that uh, Imelda and I knew each other well, um, and a great trust between. The, pair of us, uh, so that we we never had to talk about anything. What do you think the Queen would do? What do you think he'd... There was none of, I mean, it's it's implicit in the script anyway. We're inhabiting the script um, as those characters. Um, and, you know, uh, I've been... My marriage, now marriage, long, long time love affair uh, of 50 years with Kate Fahey. And uh, Imelda's been with Jim for, I think, over 30 years. I mean, we know what it's like to be in a long-term <laughs> marriage. And uh, we didn't have to talk about it. You know, I worked with my wife. Uh, we did a play together, um, The Goat, uh, the Edward Albee play. And um, it was, uh, and I don't, I, I won't go into the play, but it's a, it's a guy, he reaches his 50th birthday, and he reveals to his best friend, who then reveals it to his wife, that he's having an affair with a goat. And, um, oh, please, grow up. <laughs> and, uh, so, um, this is serious, um, which is the uh, character's reaction to it all. Um, but it was wonderful being with Kate. There was so much we didn't have to talk about being in a long relationship to discover that uh, there's, you know, it's a, it was about uh, honesty and truth within a relationship. Um, and I worked with my daughter. Uh, who played uh, Jessica when I did uh, Merchant of Venice. And um, that was wonderful. We improvised scenes together. We did it here, actually, for a, a week at the Lincoln Center. And um, we improvised scenes in Yiddish. Not, I mean, we improvised them in English, and they were translated into Yiddish. Um, but as I, I do like working with friends. Um, it was a wonderful thing working with Phoebe backstage at the Globe, where you don't get... Uh, you don't get calls to say you're, you're on. So I'd sit backstage because I was afraid of missing an entrance. And the first time I heard this voice coming out the dark was the first time I'd never heard a stage manager say it to me when I heard, Dad. <laughs> Dad, you're on. So that was nice. But, um, you know, other things. <laughs> I'd, uh, I'd hardly spent any time with... Uh, Elizabeth Debicki at all. I um, mean, we, we had the major read through. And my first day of filming is a scene you, you won't have seen today. I think it's, you didn't see that scene, did you? The, when he. When I go to tell her how to. Oh, yeah. This episode was two. Ep no, they didn't see that. No, that's in two. It's an extraordinary. That was what I was, my next question yeah. I was going to ask you about that scene. It is uh, like my blood, as I told them, turned to ice watching you tell her, like, 
you will not, you know, uh, malign this this family and disrespect the crown. And there's even what I, I I I don't know if it was in the script or you improvised it, but he punctuates it with the word ever and the way you deliver that one word is like i like i can't believe elizabeth debiggy didn't just like r run out of the room screaming well she did have a, a definite reaction to it that's for sure um and um the punctuation uh i i'd, I'd like to say it was me i don't i don't know whether there was a full stop in the script i don't know but it, it was it was written like that it was uh and also, you, you, you know, as an actor reading the script, you acknowledge that that's, uh, that's the way to go. Um, but it was my first day of filming in the whole series. And we hadn't, we didn't rehearse, we hadn't rehearsed. And uh, like a lot of, as you know, a lot of filmmaking, uh, you don't get time to rehearse. Uh, but it was unusual in this instance. And um, it, was, uh, it, it was all the better for it. As I was, I was coming with a, an intention that I was to admonish her and to tell her that uh, she could live whatever life she wanted um, as long as she played within the rules. Um, and she took the, this a horrible uh, uh, sort of pressing, when I say um, about you take th this behavior, um, you keep quiet about it and you take it to the grave and oh, that really got to me saying, having to say to Diana, you take this to the grave, which wasn't very long coming, you know. But, um, and uh, Elizabeth was um, so wonderful in that role. Um, and it was, it was quite painful to do it because it was like shouting at your daughter, um, which I got to do in Merchant of Venice. And it was. <laughs> It was quite. It was quite nice, but um, it, uh, yeah, it was. It was. It set the tone for. I, I realized we got to the end of that day, and um, people were saying that it was okay. It set that I was confident from that day on that uh, I could do it. You know. Do you really have, I, I can't believe you just said that, do you really have, at this point, with all of your extraordinary performances, you have moments on the first day where you're not confident? Second day, third day, fourth day. No, it's, of course I'm, you're not confident. It would be terrible if you were. Um, because you, you what I, especially on the, on the stage, what I like to do um, in rehearsals as well is you don't over-prepare. So you allow the audience to uh, in to do some of the work, and you you're just you know obviously when you you're playing it, it's uh, but you still try you're still discovering it every time you're doing it, and as you discover it, the audience will go oh that's in look I can see where he's going or what he's the problem he's trying to work out you know, um, I I think it's because I've done so much theatre I'm always aware of. Uh, of an audience um, and what I'm trying to tell them and what they'll, and the work they'll have to do for themselves, you know. There's another moment where you kind of eviscerate Prince Charles in front of an, what is essentially an audience in the room of a, a committee um, after his conversation with Camilla uh, Parker Bowles is leaked to the press and and that, that scene also blew me away the way that he, um, takes his son down yeah yeah i know i enjoyed that as well yeah <laughs> um i enjoyed it because i did want to uh i i i knew what I, I thought about philip and i knew what i thought about his relationship with charles and i'd known from doing some research on this and known from before that charles had a real problem with philip in that Philip uh, didn't approve of him. And that's the worst thing that could happen between uh, a father and a son. I've got two sons, so I, I know that it's, it's um, I have made terrible mistakes when they were quite young of, of their, um, I realized when I was, think that they were disappointing me. And uh, it's terrible. And it's a lesson you have to learn fairly quick, you know, they're, 
they're uh, 36 and 39, and they're very, they're very forgiving now. But uh, I, I recognize that in, in Philip, in, you know, uh, 10 times worse than I ever could have been. Um, and so I wanted, to, I wanted to be that hard and tough on him. Um, and it was horrible to him. Uh, not horrible, I'd like it to be more. But you know, the, the irony of that is that um, we uh, did a camera rehearsal and it was one of the days that Peter Morgan was on the set and I came off the set and we had a little chat and he said, uh, I, th I, th I think we, that's, it's too long. We've got to, got to cut it down. I was going, no, no. No, please don't cut it down. Uh, I, I said, L let me do it. Let me do it, and then then you can cut it. Cut it in the edit if you want. Oh, oh well, all right, all right. Oh, bloody hell! And um, did they? Big moment. It's not edited. It's all oh, there. Oh yes. It, it, yeah. um, but uh, and I was, I was vindicated. Peter was vindicated when, after uh, Philip had died, and there were documentaries on uh, on television and uh, um, uh, his family. Uh, talking about him, especially his grandchildren, and um, they, they they had the grandchildren talking. And then they cut to Charles, uh, a single image of him on the screen, and he was talking about his father. And everything he said was how his father d uh, disapproved of him, but he said it while with a smile and while laughing. You know, I can't remember the exact words, but it was like, um, you know, he, he wouldn't, um, <laughs> he, he, he wouldn't let me light a barbecue. <laughs> and he'd smile, and then the camera would stay on him, and the smile would drop. And the look in his eyes, um, but looking at the interviewer, was like, yes, what's your next question? This is, you know, oh, God. And... Um, yeah, it's it's all he wouldn't. Charles uh, Philip wouldn't even allow Charles to go on the same hunt as him, the shoot in Scotland. He was made to go to another estate because he wasn't good enough to be on his shoot. You know, I, I mean, it's a complex relationship, and yeah. and I would say in that scene, you, you know, when a father has that level of disappointment, it's that much more potent in in it's so much deeper and his rage is that much stronger because it's not any old disappointment in, in you know, in your eyes in that scene, it really, it, it comes through. Whereas in, in other moments, he, he is very tender and you talked about Penny and, and he's curious and he's smart and he's interested in history. I mean, there's so many things, uh, but in that moment, you just, you feel his, his shame. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it's it's an extraordinary performance, um, one of many, many. Um, I want to thank Sir Jonathan Price um, so much for, for being here.